Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, um, we're really diving deep into Hollywood fire, this book that's got everything, action, romance, you name it. It'll get your pulse pounding, that's for sure. Yeah, it's like being thrown right into the flames. It's a Hollywood love story. But um, this one, well, let's just say it's got some twists. It's got a soldier's intuition, a musician who's really guarded, and of course, the glips and the, uh, what's the word? The underbelly. Yeah, the underbelly of Hollywood. And, you know, those secrets they say are hidden in plain sight. Oh, there are always secrets. This story, it's got them. And the best, we're getting this, like, Fly on the wall perspective on these characters' lives. Ooh, I love when we get a peek behind the curtain. Who are these characters? Okay, so first up, you've got Gabe Saxton, ex military, Marine Raider, super observant, like scary observant. I bet. You know what they say about those guys hyper aware, uh -huh. even after they've left the service. Exactly. But Gabe, he's got this other side to him an intuition. Like, since he was a kid, he's had this feeling that when he hit 40, something big, something massive was going to change his life. Hmm. Like a premonition. Mm -hmm. Fate. Right. But uh, his 41st birthday, yeah, it came and went. Mm. He's more lost than ever. He feels like whatever was supposed to happen, well, it didn't. Those missed moments can really mess with your head, huh? Okay, I gotta know more. Who else is in this story? All right, so buckle up, because here's where it gets really good. Enter Kayla Knight. She's our musician, crazy talented singer, but she's also incredibly guarded. Like, walls up, trust no one guarded. Hmm. Those walls are usually there for a reason, right? Yeah. Past trauma, heartbreak, what you hiding? Well, the novel hints at a past she'd rather forget, something she even keeps from her closest friend. But get this, there's this one song, Somewhere You. Whenever she hears it, she finds a moment of peace. Interesting. It sounds like that song represents something she desperately wants but can't seem to find in real life. Safety, maybe. Yeah. Or love. We all have our somewhere you, don't we? Don't we ever. Okay, ready for two more players? Hit me. Lawrence and Betty, they're Hollywood royalty. The kind of couple that, you know, they practically invented the red carpet. Lawrence runs a huge entertainment company, and they're, like, incredibly close to Gabe, almost like surrogate parents. Okay, so you've got this family dynamic layered on top of the whole Hollywood power couple thing. <laughs> Intriguing. But I bet it's not all sunshine and roses. You're reading my mind. They've got this air of secrecy around them, especially when it comes to Kayla. Like, they're protective of her or something, which, knowing this author... Means there's way more to it than meets the eye. I'm hooked. Where do you go from here? So we've got Gabe. He's searching for something, but is he? I don't know. Maybe he doesn't even know what he's looking for. And then there's Kayla with her walls holding everyone at arm's length. And of course, you can't forget Lawrence and Betty. Power couple extraordinaire. But something tells me they're not just sipping champagne and going to premieres. Yeah, you know what they say about still waters. Yeah. And speaking of things not being what they seem, this is where fate, or maybe just a really good travel agent, comes in. Gabe and Kayla. They have this chance encounter at LAX. Of all the airports in all the world, right. Right. But it's not just a bumping into you while looking for a gate 42 kind of encounter. Gabe feels something, a pull toward Kayla. And this is important because it's that thing his family calls the boom, this like instant, almost destined connection. Ooh, the boom. Okay, so we've got a family history of finding the one. Talk about pressure. But I digress. Back to Kayla. So she's headed to Vail. Trying to get away from it all before a big event in L.A., needing a little peace and quiet, you know. And wouldn't you know it, Gabe? He's already in Vail, celebrating his birthday. Of course he is. It's like the universe is playing matchmaker, right? Right. But, and this is where it gets good, they, they share this, and I quote, profound night together. And then, poof. Kayla's gone. She disappears the next morning. I know. So frustrating. The author doesn't give us all the juicy details, but still. But isn't that interesting? It's like we're left to sit with the unsaid, the mystery of it all. What do you think happened that night? I mean, knowing Kayla with her walls and her guarded heart, did something happen or was it the opposite? It makes you feel the weight of it all, even without knowing. You know, it makes you wonder if this is Kayla's past coming back to haunt her. Like she's running from something, but maybe not from Gabe. Maybe from herself. Right, like... She's almost afraid of letting the good in. And haven't we all been there when something feels so good, so right, that you just want to run for the hills? Okay, but don't get too lost in Kayla's head, because the story, it doesn't end there. Their paths cross again, this time in Los Angeles. And let's just say, I'm starting to think these chance encounters, they might be a little too convenient. You're starting to suspect something's up. I am, because Lawrence, he pulls Gabe aside all worried about Kayla's safety. Which, when you think about it, is a little strange, right? 
a Hollywood bigwig confiding in an ex-military guy about a musician, something's not adding up. Exactly. And this is where the real drama unfolds. Because Lawrence, he drops a bomb. Kayla. She's not who she seems. Well, let's just say she's got a past. Yeah. She's not just running from a broken heart. She's running for her life. Bingo. Yeah. And Jacob Sykes. Ah. He's not the kind of guy who forgets a face or a betrayal. He wants revenge, even from behind bars. That is chilling. This just went from zero to 60 in about two seconds. Right. And Lawrence, he's convinced that Sykes is somehow orchestrating things from prison. Wow. Talk about a plot twist. So knowing what we know now, it really makes you think about that song she loves, right? It takes on a whole new meaning. Absolutely. It's like that song represents everything she longs for, everything she can't have. So we're at this Hollywood premiere, you know, all glitz and glamour, but it's not just about the movie, right? Mm -hmm. Because the song, the one Kayla and Gabe recorded, it's blowing up. Everyone's talking about it. The one based on Gabe's family melody, right? That's the one. Talk about a recipe for love, huh? Family history, a hit song, a Hollywood premiere. But, and I know you're thinking it too, there's this shadow hanging over everything. Jacob Sykes, he's still out there. Or at least his influence is. It's like you're watching this love story unfold, but you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And the song, remember how much it means to Kayla. That longing for somewhere safe, someone to share the burden with. It just hits different knowing what she's been through. And just when it seems like things couldn't get any better, the song's a smash, Gabe and Kayla. They're closer than ever. Everything explodes. Kayla's gone. Vanished. Taken, just like Lawrence feared. And Gabe, he yeah. knows. He knows this isn't Kayla shutting down, pushing him away. This is Sykes. And that's when we see just how far Gabe will go to protect the woman he loves. He's activated, you know, like all those years of training, it kicks in. So what does he do? Remember those brothers they mentioned? The ones who are also ex-military? Well, let's just say family comes first. They pull together every resource, every contact with like this well-oiled machine, laser focused on one thing, getting Kayla back. That must have been something to read. Oh, it is. The author did not hold back. It's a full-on manhunt. And finally, they get a lead. Psych is compound. Don't tell me they storm the castle. What can I say? It's the climax. But it's not that simple. It's a standoff. Tense, brutal. But Gabe, he never gives up hope, and in the end, good triumphs, Kayla's safe, Sykes. Well, let's just say he won't be hurting anyone ever again. Oh, thank goodness. But I can't imagine that kind of trauma just goes away, can it? No, it doesn't. But that's where the real power of this story lies, I think. It's about healing. Because surrounded by Gabe and this new family, these brothers who are fiercely loyal, she starts to find her way back to herself. It's messy, it's complicated, but it's real. There's something really beautiful about that, isn't there? Yeah. Finding your people, the ones who see you, the real you, even after everything you've been through. Absolutely. And here's the thing, Kayla. She makes a choice. She decides she's not going to hide anymore. She steps forward and tells her story. Wow. Just, wow. Talk about reclaiming your narrative, huh? Exactly. And in doing so, she exposes the underbelly of Hollywood, those who turn a blind eye to Sykes' crimes. It's a powerful reminder that sometimes the bravest thing you can do is speak your truth. But this isn't just your average love story, is it? The author, Lynn Lichty, she keeps dropping these hints about destiny throughout the whole thing. It's so clever how she does it, using these random encounters to build this whole idea of fate. Like Gabe, he's got this feeling he'll find love at 40, almost like he knew Kayla was out there, somewhere. And then there's the song, that Somewhere You song. <laughs> Years before they meet, he writes this song and it's like, it's Kayla's story, even though he hasn't even met her. It's crazy, right? Makes you wonder, are these just coincidences or is there something else going on, something bigger pulling the strings? Makes you look at your own life, right? <laughs> those chance meetings, those moments that change everything. Have you ever felt that, like you were meant to meet someone? It's a powerful question. It makes you think, what if some things are meant to be? But there's something else too. Lishity, she's not just a writer, you know? She was an actress, a singer. She was in Hollywood, the real deal. Get out. Yeah. Seriously. Who does she work with? Big names, people you definitely know. Roman Polanski, even the Scorpions. Wow, talk about knowing the scene. I bet that influences her writing big time. For sure, it gives her writing this cinematic quality. You can practically see the California coast, feel the buzz of a Hollywood party. And the underbelly of it all, she captures it all. Okay, so we've got this incredible love story, this hint of destiny, and a writer who knows how to set a scene. But what about the symbolism? You mentioned it earlier. It's woven throughout the whole story, adding this depth, this sense of foreshadowing. 
Remember that dream Kayla has in chapter 11? It's not just a random dream, it's a glimpse into her inner struggle. Refresh my memory, what was it about, again, that dream? Okay, so picture this. Kayla is surrounded by these delicate pink rose petals, right? Love, hope, a fresh start, all that. Then they change these petals. They turn this deep, almost violent red, and thorns, sharp as anything, they start piercing her skin. Yeah, that's an image that sticks with you. What's it all mean? It's that double-edged sword of love and pain, the fear of opening yourself up to something new, something as strong as Gabe's love. Those thorns, they're her defenses, sure, but they're also this fear of letting herself believe in something good, something that might be stronger than all the darkness she's known. Wow, that's powerful. Makes you think, doesn't it? Is Kayla just scared of getting hurt again? Or is it more, is she pushing away the idea of faith, of a love as strong as what Gabe offers, a love that might just save her? No, that's a question that stays with you. It really makes you think twice, you know, about letting someone in, especially after going through something so traumatic. Yeah, it's like the higher those walls, the harder it is to see what's real, what's good. Exactly. And for Kayla, those walls, they come from a dark place. We talked about the kidnapping, but it's more than that. It's how that trauma changes a person. Right. It's not just a plot point. It's everything for her. Imagine that. Stolen as a child, living a lie, always looking over your shoulder. It leaves scars you can't see. No wonder she can't trust. Mm -hmm. Can't believe good things can happen after all that. And then there's Jacob Sykes, the villain of the story. He's a constant reminder of that darkness, that threat that never really goes away. He's the one behind it all, right? Yeah. The kidnapping, the lies, everything. Yep, the puppet master. He's everything Kayla wants to escape from. And as the story goes on, all those buried fears, they start bubbling back up. Like he's this ghost from the past, ready to wreck everything she's built with Gabe. And this is where Lichnidi, she turns up the tension. The past isn't just over, it's right there, ready to explode and ruin everything. Talk about a page turner. You're just waiting for Sykes to show up and tear them apart. It shows you healing, it's not a straight line, you know? It's learning to trust again, being vulnerable, finding strength where you didn't expect it. Finding strength in the face of fear. Which brings us back to faith. Not just in Gabe, but something bigger. Absolutely. Remember that dream? The thorns, the blood red roses. It's like she's resisting something this love Gabe offers. Like she doesn't think she's worthy of it. Like she's wrestling with the universe, wondering if maybe, just maybe, there's a plan for her. And that struggle, that internal battle with faith, so many people deal with that. You know, those moments where you think, what if this isn't random? What if there's a reason for it all? It makes you question everything. Are we just making it up as we go along? Or is there something else directing us? And that's what Hollywood Fire does so well. It doesn't give you the answers, but it makes you ask the questions. Fate, free will, all of it. Like the book is making us look in the mirror. Yeah. You know? What do we believe? Exactly. And speaking of believing, remember Gabe's premonition. Finding love at 40. It's a small thing, but it says a lot about the power of believing. Right. It's like mm -hmm. he just knew, even when it seemed impossible. That's what makes their love story so amazing. It's holding on to hope, even when it seems crazy. It's trusting that the universe has a plan, even when you can't see it yet. It's about trusting that gut feeling, that little voice that says anything is possible. Yes. And that brings us to, I think, one of the most powerful parts of their connection. The song. Oh, man. Somewhere you. <laughs> It's practically its own character. The way Lichty weaves it into the story, it's masterful. It's not just background music. It's their connection, their destinies intertwined. It's like the song was waiting for them, even before they were born, you know. And the fact that it speaks to Kayla, her experiences, her desire for love, it's what makes it so powerful. It gives me chills, seriously. Like the universe itself brought them together through music. And that destiny, it's not just them. Look at Lawrence, for example. Oh, yeah, Lawrence. He keeps popping up at these key moments. Mm -hmm. Lawrence is stuck, caught between guilt and trying to make things right. Right. He's the one who feels responsible, like he owes her something. Exactly. And that guilt, it drives him to protect her now, no matter what. Like he's trying to change the past to fix what happened to her. And in doing that, he's also wrestling with destiny. Do we have a choice or is everything already decided? It adds this whole other layer, right? Mm -hmm. Our choices, the echo outward, affect more than just ourselves. And sometimes those echoes, they lead us exactly where we need to be. Even if the journey is full of guilt, regret, and hoping for a second chance. And that theme of redemption, it's everywhere in this story. It's never too late to change your story, to ask for forgiveness, to fight for love and a better ending. It's a powerful message. People can change, grow, and believe in a brighter future.
And Lichty, she doesn't sugarcoat it. It's messy, it's real, but it's ultimately hopeful. And speaking of Lichty's writing, she mm. is just a master, isn't she? The pacing, the descriptions, everything. Absolutely. From page one, you're hooked. The way she describes things, you're right there. You can feel the California sun, smell the ocean, even taste the darkness in the rough parts. She doesn't just tell the story. She puts you right in it. Exactly. And the dialogue, it crackles. You can hear their voices in your head, each one unique and real. Don't even get me started on those cliffhangers. Yeah. Lexi knows how to keep you reading. She's like a master conductor, building the tension, keeping you on the edge of your seat. It's a roller coaster of emotions, and she's in control. And just when you think you know what's going to happen, Bam! She throws a curveball and you have to rethink everything. It's like that constant surprise that makes it impossible to put down. And yet even with all the twists and turns, her writing is so clear, so direct, she doesn't need fancy language to get her point across. It's real, it's from the heart, and it hits you right in the feels. She trusts the reader to connect the dots, to see the deeper meaning. And that meaning... It stays with you. It does. It makes you think, makes you feel, it makes you look at your own life, your choices everything. Okay, so we've got these incredible characters, this complex story, amazing writing. But there's one thing we haven't talked about, and I think it's time. Oh, I'm intrigued. What are we missing? The steamy scenes. I mean, let's be honest, this book gets hot. Well, it's true. Lecti doesn't shy away from their passion, but it never feels forced or out of place. Right. It's like this natural progression of their feelings, yeah. all that attraction and connection it has to go somewhere. It's deeper than just physical desire, although that's definitely there, too. It's about finding comfort, safety in the middle of all the chaos. It's about rediscovering intimacy, pleasure after everything they've been through. And it's about the power of touch, letting go, trusting another person completely. It's like their lovemaking is healing, a way to deal with the trauma, to find peace in each other's arms. That's a really beautiful way to put it. And I think it speaks to how powerful their love is. It's not just about accepting each other, but helping each other heal, grow, become better versions of themselves. Seeing the best in each other, even when they can't see it in themselves. Exactly. That kind of love, it's rare, it's precious. It's the stuff great stories are made of. Speaking of great stories, I think it's time we talked about one of the most moving parts of Hollywood Fire, the theme of faith. Yes. Let's dive into that. Mm -hmm. This book... It's a romance, definitely. But there's something more there, something spiritual that runs beneath the surface. Yeah. yeah, you can feel it there, like a current running through everything. It's not like hitting you over the head with it, yeah. but it's woven in, giving this extra layer of hope and second chances. Mm. Exactly. Look at Kayla. She gets away from this monster, finds peace and healing with Gabe, starts building a new life. It's that classic redemption story. You see it in so many spiritual traditions. It makes you wonder, right? If you're open to it, if you let yourself be vulnerable, can love really do that? Heal you? Bring back that belief, not just in another person, but in something bigger? It's a question Lexi seems to be asking throughout the book. Take Gabe. His faith in Kayla, in their love, even when she's pushing him away, it speaks volumes. He sees the good, the woman she can be, even when she doesn't believe it herself. It's like he's holding up this mirror, showing her a reflection she thought was gone forever. And that belief, that constant love, it's what finally lets her believe in herself again. To see a future without the darkness of her past. Like, he's this, I don't know, this channel for this love so strong that it can actually heal her deepest wounds and restore her faith, not just in him, but in people in general. You got it. Think about the big themes, love without conditions, sacrifice, seeing the worth in someone, even when they're messed up, broken. You see those ideas in both. And that transformation, both of them have it. Like yeah. in Christianity, the church is this refuge right. where people can heal, become whole again. And Gabe's kind of like that for Kayla in a way. He's that safe place, that constant love, and it allows her to face those demons and come out stronger. He doesn't just see the trauma. He sees her, the strong, beautiful person underneath. Like he's guiding her back to a place where she belongs, mm -hmm. where she's loved. That's a beautiful way to put it. And it makes you think about love and faith, how they show up in our lives. It's not always about religion or big gestures. Sometimes it's the small moments of grace, the quiet belief one person has in another. And Hollywood Fire, it captures those moments so well, those quiet but powerful acts of love and faith. It's a story that stays with you long after you've finished it. Absolutely. That's the sign of a truly great story. It lights something up inside you, sparks your imagination, leaves you thinking about the big questions long after you've closed the book. Well said. And on that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into Hollywood Fire.
We hope you enjoyed exploring the depths of love, destiny, and the incredible resilience of the human spirit with us. Until next time, keep searching for those hidden meanings and never underestimate the power of a good story to reveal the hidden depths within yourself. So what do you say? Ready to dive into another story? Always. Especially if it's as good as this one.